Hello everybody. I'm going to be recording a uh, short uh, video tutorial here. It's been a while since I've done one. I'm going to be just going over the basics of the video sequence editor. So just go ahead and delete the default startup stuff there. And then I'm going to change my video output settings to my defaults, which are 1024 by 768. I just like to start at frame zero, really for no reason. And then um, if you're going to be using a video that has audio interwoven with it, so you know something you recorded from your camera, make sure you set your frame rate right, because otherwise your video and audio will get an offset. So that's just something to pay attention to. Um, and then the other thing you want to make sure uh, under post processing is that you have the sequencer enabled. Um, in my case, I do not need compositing enabled. Uh, if you don't have the sequencer enabled, when you go to video editing and you try to animate this you're not going to see anything because it's going to try to render a scene and if you deleted the default startup scene um, it's going to give you an error of no camera so make sure you have sequencer enabled okay so basically we have this is where we do all the video editing and putting video files together this screen here is our preview this is just the f-curve editor um, there's a lot of values that you can animate on your images, videos, sounds, probably even on transitions or things you can edit. So this is where you see all your keyframing. And then this little field here, we can toggle on and off. <laughs> I thought we could toggle on and off, but I guess not. Um, this is just the where you'll see properties of your strips. So to start, I'm going to add our logo. I'm actually um, going to be doing a little bit here for the uh, animation sequence we have for creation with computer animation. So we got our logo and like I said that's where we see our preview and I can just scrub through there. And then the next thing to add is actually going to be a movie and that is our title. And just grabbing this using the right key just click to drag and then left click to release and then we have the animation and then again like I was saying over here we have the name uh, blend types which if I were to put this over the other we would see the blending there um, in this case I just want to uh, replace and actually it doesn't even matter what I have it set for because it's not going over a different video or anything else in the I don't know what I want to call it timeline sequencer strip I don't know but it's not on top of any other uh, image so the blend mode doesn't really matter but like I said we have the channel so I can move that up and down start frame the length some strip input telling you where it's finding stuff from you can do an image offset which is handy if your picture is larger than the uh, preview area here and you just want to get it to a certain portion and you also have image cropping which in this case is stretching but if you use image crop and offset in combination you can crop an image and get it to fit um, then you have some filters for your video deinterlacing color stuff and some proxies so and just a lot of your different options there oops and I actually put them in the wrong track okay and then I'm gonna add in some audio here sound and I'm just going to grab two audio clips I need here. Again just dragging with right key and releasing with the left. Now this is I remember this one I think is my title track. Bible animated how do we present? Yep. Okay and then here um if you're doing anything you're trying to line audio up with the video make sure you have it on A V sync or frame dropping might work too but if you have no sync what can happen is it'll try to play your video at the 30 frames a second and if it can't it'll it'll play every frame but it'll be playing a slower frame rate I should try, in this case 25 frames a second but if you can't, it can't process the video quick enough it'll the video playback will slow down and it'll keep playing audio and you'll get an offset between the audio where the the green marker here is you get an offset between this and the actual audio you're hearing which can be pretty annoying so I find handy just always leave it AV sync because then it syncs the audio and the video together.
Okay, so then I'm just gonna slide this around till I Bible animated proudly presents. Find a spot where I like it. I think this one we had at about frame fifty five where we had to end off. The Bible animated proudly presents. presents. Yep. And then we'll just Creation with computer Toss that in. Creation with computer animation. Okay, now I'm gonna actually line up the end of the audio track with the end of the video Bible track. Animated. Which you can really handy when you're dragging a track around it'll show you the start and end frames in the top and bottom and the left and right corners there and it shows you the start and end frames of all your other strips too so you can easily get it to the exact right position and you can use control to constrain it in this case I'm jumping by what am I jumping by 30 frames depending on your zoom you'll jump by different amounts so if you need to move it a couple seconds or something and you want it to be just exactly perfect, you can control and constrain it. Okay, so let's see how this sounds. Okay, I'm liking that. Okay, so then I'm gonna add in another video, which will be this O1 file here. And I'm just gonna put that butt it right up to the end where it goes black. And then we're going to put some more sound in. There's going to be a voice. And versus 1, 2, 5. Add. And. It's actually handy if you leave a few. Uh, oops. If you leave a few spaces in between audio and video tracks. Because if I needed to put an effect in here, it'd be easier just for my visual aspect of it to have the file directly on top and then the transition so I can easily tell what's transitioning with what instead of having my audio track in this in these channels here and then having up here something else another graphic that's blending with this and I can't see both of them at once unless I zoom out and then things are too small and so it's just easier if you try to keep things spaced nicely so you can at later points throw things in if need be. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Okay, the earth now this is just a little something that's for me. I'm gonna line these ends up because there's a big blank spot at the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Damn, and the earth was without there. form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Okay, oh, so that's working. Um, really, just want to jump quick to one last portion here I actually have the next part that just finished is going to be we're actually going to do this as a sequence I have if I can find the correct location here here we go let's change this to thumbnails 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 here we go it's going to take a while to load some of these um, this animation sequence here that's loading all the individual frames these frames took about, for some of them, it was up to about 5 minutes, other ones were like 46 seconds. So there's a lot of difference in the frame length on these. But I was running these overnight in 3 nights time. So uh, I did them all as PNGs so I could easily just take all the individual images and then combine them as an animation. So to do that, just to A to select all, and then we'll add the image strip. And right there we go. That is the... Uh, Zoom out enough here, lost the screen. You know, it's the uh, animation. Let's crank this up to a slightly higher number, and then this is my image sequence of all a bunch of individual images, and it's playing it together as the video. So then I'm just gonna quick throw in my next soundtrack, which is the next set of verses here, which oops. Just there we go. Uh, let's snag it up there. There we go. Okay, and then for one last thing. Now, um, as you might be noticing these are getting really tiny. So, an, a handy thing to do. I want to zoom to the length, but I'd like to have a little more height. So, if you hold Control down and use the center button on your mouse, you can interactively zoom, both vertically and horizontally. 
So, I can get that about the size I want and then pull it up. And then scroll down and go, wow, I made these way too tall. Okay, that's looking better. So then, the one last thing I wanted to quickly add was, because we're going to do a little bit of keyframing on, a sound strip again. And let's see, this is going to be sound effects, and it's this sound, which happens to be a uh, waves or something. We're going to start this at frame 131. Come on, 131. Because. Okay, I don't know if you can hear that. Let me bear with me here. I pull the microphone off my head shirt. And. <laughs> I'm hoping you can hear this. And God saw the light that it was good. Um, we have waves flashing in the background. Computer animation. In the beginning, God and you'll notice that they just movement. cut right in. And the earth I really don't want it to cut in, so dark. what we're going to do is we will put a keyframe at the first frame when the audio comes in. And we're going to go, there's a volume button here someplace, volume. And we're going to put the volume at zero and put a keyframe in. And then we'll just jump up say 20 frames and we'll put the volume to probably 0.75 I'm thinking is about the volume I want the entire track to be at so let's listen to that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form okay that's probably a little high I'm trying to just get the audio as uh, or the soundtrack here sound effect rather I'm trying to just get it so you hear it but we don't want to overpower the voice because we do want to hear the voice and that is more important than the sound effect so that should be a little bit quieter than the voices so God created the heaven and see how it sounds now in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was okay I'm liking that you've got just a little bit of sound just enough that you can hear it it's there and it's not overpowering the voice but you're definitely hearing it so there you go a basic introduction to the video sequence editor. Um, one thing I did not cover, which I should quickly do, um, is transitions. Just go to an effect strip. Um, basically, just put you have to have two tracks to do transition, and one track needs to be on top of the other track. Then you select the first track you select is going to be the one that will. It's going to be the one that, it, if you're using a fade, it'll fade from the first track to the second. So, if I select it with the second track, oops, and then put an effect in, and do a cross, it's going to jump immediately to the second strip, fade to the end of the first strip, and then jump back to the second strip, which is backwards for what we want. So, you would select the strip you want first, and then the second, and then, again, use a cross. This is just a fade, basically. And you do have a lot of different options on the fade here. I can actually... I thought... Here we go. Um, nope, that's not it. Someplace. Oh, it's not the cross. That one you don't have many options on. It's, um... Let me pull it up. It's the wipe. You can get some pretty cool effects here. Right now, it's defaulting just to a slide going down but on this you can do blur so I got about half blur here which you can't even tell I got too much going here we got it's a gradual fade in you can also adjust the angle so you can fade in on an angle which we're not really noticing just because this the beginning of the second track is already kind of a fade the one thing I want to show was the um do 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 it's here someplace. Used to be. Oh, I'm on the wrong that's why. Okay. Um one of our wipe options should be transition we can get a clock effect, which 
like a clock spinner. Let me turn off all that blur because that blur is making it tough to see. So we've got the clock effect there. We have an iris, which just comes from the center. And the last one is double, which I believe is just two bars. Okay, it's dark and center, so it goes out. And then again, we have that angle aspect here. So we can rotate and have it go sideways. Or can we go 45 degrees? So we have some options on that. Again, we have the blur there. Filters, color balance. So there you have it. The basics to the video sequence editor in Blender 2.5. And uh, don't forget to like us on Facebook. Just search for The Bible Animated. And subscribe to the YouTube channel. And visit our website, thebibleanimated.com. Thanks so much for watching and God bless.